Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be taking you through my perfect AOS 5 build. We're going to be looking at every component and the reasons behind my choice of each one. I'm going to be using this quad to make a few more videos, one on filter tuning, one on PID tuning, and I'm also going to be posting some flight footage so that you can see my piloting. Before we jump into the video, a little bit of housekeeping. I chose the motors, flight controller and ESC for this build and I actually couldn't find somewhere to buy them. So I reached out to iFlight who are the manufacturer and iFlight were kind enough to send me the flight controller ESC and motors for this build free of charge. iFlight have had no editorial control whatsoever over the content of this video and also no advance warning of what I'm going to say. With that said, let's get into it. All right, so let me take you through my perfect AOS 5 build step by step. Starting up here with the camera, now I've chosen to use the DJI HD FPV camera here because I love the DJI system. I think the video quality is, is really incredible and is a little bit ahead of, of really anything else that you can buy today. And Cadex have been doing a great job with their, particularly their Nebula Pro camera, at starting to approach the quality, the image quality of the DJI camera. But I still think the DJI camera has a little bit of an edge. And so um, I designed my frame to take this camera. That's why the camera plates are spaced 20 millimeters apart rather than 19 millimeters. And so this is the camera that I wanted to use in the build. If we come back, you, you can't really see it underneath here, but this is the iFlight um, 45 amp mini ESC. And I was just so impressed to see a mini ESC with a 45 amp rating. I wanna show you something. This is a 40 amp rated ESC that I was using uh, on a previous build up until a few weeks ago. And I mean, you can see that it's absolutely enormous in comparison. I'm so impressed that they've managed to achieve um, such a high rating on the ESC in such a small package. And that stack comes with the Suxex Mini F7 Twin G, which is, uh, I mean, it's a very capable flight controller, particularly for the size. A few of the features that I really like about it, and the main reason that I chose it for this perfect build, is it comes with two gyro chips. And those two gyro chips are set up in a way that you can use sensor fusion to average the results of those two gyro chips. And that effectively gives you some filtering, some noise filtering for free without adding any delay to the PID loop. So I'm really excited to try the sensor fusion out. I'm hoping that it is able to give me an even cleaner gyro signal than I might otherwise be able to get. And the fact that it comes on a mini flight controller is, is really fantastic. It's got a USB-C plug here which is great because it's the same as the, the Cadex Vista, which means that I only need one cable when I go out to fly. So uh, I really like that. I also think that the USB-C connector is a little bit more robust and a little bit easier to use as well than um, a micro connector, just because it's reversible and, and things of that nature. The flight controller comes with an F7 micro, and I think the, the STM32 F7 micros are really, if you're building new quads today and you want them to be future proof and you want to know that you're going to be able to use all of the advanced features in, in beta flight and also run the, the fastest PID loops and, and things that you can, an F7 chip is really a, a great choice. Between the ESC and the flight controller, I have an extra component that you can't really see. For those of you who maybe aren't familiar with this particular product, this is a Diatone Mamba interference isolation film. And what it is, is it's a polyimide film with a grid of fine copper traces running all across the film. And it's got these pads all the way around the edge that are ground pads and uh, you connect that to the, the battery ground. And what this does is it actually provides a Faraday cage. So all ESCs, because they're digital devices and they're switching very fast, produce EMI or electromagnetic interference. And that EMI can add noise to your gyro signal um, by electromagnetic coupling. 
And this interference isolation film just absorbs that electromagnetic interference and just dissipates it straight back to the battery ground. So it protects the sensitive electronics in the flight controller from any interference that's being caused by the ESC. And I think it's great to have on any build, but particularly where we're trying to get the absolute minimum filtering and the maximum possible um, performance, it's, uh, it's definitely a, a nice thing to have. If we move back from the, the stack, we have this. Now this is a little package here, it's two components. The first one is quite straightforward. It's just a 35 volt, 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. And that's there to just help absorb any spikes in voltage that we get from the regenerative braking that uh, is done on the motors. So as, as many of you probably know, in order for the motors to change speed as quickly as possible, the ESC actually applies braking to the motor. And because of the way that braking is done, some of the, the energy from the rotation of the motor actually goes back onto the battery leads and almost recharges the battery. It, it provides a little surge in voltage on the, uh, on the battery contact. And those little surges in voltage not only have a small risk of burning out components, but they also create electrical noise. And that electrical noise can travel um, into the flight controller and filter through all the voltage regulators and can even make it down to the voltage supply that's going to things like the gyro uh, and the flight controller. That little bit of extra noise just just adds a little bit to the noise in the system already and we want to try and avoid that as much as possible so we've got this large thousand microfarad 35 volt capacitor but strapped to the back of that we have this and some of you will be familiar with this component and, and some of you may not be this is a fettec spike absorber and what it does is it's got three tvs diodes connected across the battery contacts. And a TVS diode is a really interesting component because it's an open circuit most of the time. And then if the voltage across the battery contacts gets up above a certain level, which I don't know if you can see that, it's marked on here, 25.2 volts. So if the voltage gets much above 25.2 volts, these TVS diodes suddenly switch and become a dead short circuit and that just kills the spike. It kills the spike by just conducting that extra electricity straight to ground and you get the top of the spike just sliced off. And this happens incredibly fast. It's these components respond so quickly that they're, they're really excellent for just preventing that spike that's coming, you know, that's coming along. You get the spike of voltage, the TVS diode conducts, and it just kills it. And then the moment the voltage drops back below that 25.2 volts, the TVS diode becomes open circuit again and everything continues as normal. So really great little component and a must have for any build where you, uh, where you want the minimum possible electrical noise. And particularly if you've got um, you know, a smaller ESC, like a mini ESC, and you just, you just want to give it that little bit of extra protection. Over here, we have the receiver and the little ceramic antenna on the corner probably gives away that this is an Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz receiver. And the reason that I chose Express LRS for this build is really simple. Express LRS presently provides the lowest latency RC link that you can get. It has the shortest time between the transmission of the information of your stick positions and when that information is received by the flight controller. And we want to try and keep that latency as minimum as possible because we want the flight controller to be able to respond to what we're telling it to do as quickly as possible. And Express LRS provides a small but significant benefit here. As we keep moving backwards, we end here at the Cadex Vista. And I think, um, you know, this, everyone's probably familiar with this. 
Um, it's a really good way to get digital video onto a relatively lightweight build uh, without really any compromises. Um, so uh, definitely had to choose that. And I've also gone with this um, iFlight Sigma left-hand circularly polarized antenna. Um, it's nice and lightweight and uh, I quite like the purple color as well. So if we come over here and look at the motors, this was the biggest thing that I wasn't super happy with on my previous AOS 5 build. I used some 3B Hobby 3BT motors and they're $13 motors and they're not as smooth as they could be and so I didn't get the really great noise performance in the gyro that, that I was really hoping for. Um, so I'm very excited to have fitted these motors to this build. Now these are the iFlight Zing 2 2207 1855 kV and as some of you might remember from my motor video I think that 2207 is just about the perfect size for 5 inch freestyle and 1855 kV is a little bit of a higher kV but when we talk about props I'll uh, I'll come back to that so the size is really nice these are incredibly smooth feeling motors um, there's very little cogging torque which is really really nice and uh, they look absolutely stunning as well. So I'm really, really excited to uh, try these motors on this build. I'm hoping they're gonna give really excellent vibration performance. It's gonna allow me to push the filters and the PIDs further than I've ever been able to go before. For props, we're gonna be using these props. These are the FX S3 watermelon props. And for those of you who might have seen my video on props, for freestyle, particularly aggressive freestyle, where you're going to have lots of adverse inlet conditions, you want a really light pitch prop and you want to spin it nice and fast. So that's why I've gone with these S3 props. They're very, very light props. And I've also gone with a higher KV motor. 1855 KV is a reasonably high KV on success. So I'm going to be taking these light pitch props, spinning them nice and fast, and that's going to minimize the risk of these blades stalling, even in really aggressive moves. And if I can avoid blade stall, then I can avoid uh, a lot of aerodynamic buffeting effects. I can avoid um, some difficult. And if I can avoid blade stall, I can avoid a lot of nasty aerodynamic effects that cause the quad to, to shake around as you do those aggressive moves. And it'll minimize prop wash oscillation, which is, which is really what we're, what we're aiming to do here. The frame is the AOS 5 frame. Um, for those of you who are familiar with my channel, you probably uh, have seen a couple of my other videos on this frame. I, I launched this frame quite recently. Um, it's my attempt to make uh, a really high performing, low vibration, relatively light, I'm talking, you know, 525 gram, all up weight, five inch drone. So, um, I'll put some links in the video description to some more information on this frame. And if you really like it, uh, you can actually order it from CNC Madness. So uh, you can try this build out for yourself if you want to. Now there is a silent hero in this build. <laughs> and that's this guy. Those of you who uh, know about the grease will, uh, will know that this is designed to improve the damping of the frame. Now on the previous build I did, I didn't use any grease because I felt it was uh, maybe cheating a little bit, but I feel like on the perfect build, I cannot avoid slathering the whole thing in this PG44A grease. And so uh, I'm hoping that this is gonna add damping to the frame um, and that's gonna help reduce even further any noise that might be generated by the motors, any vibrations in the frame. This grease is gonna dissipate those vibrations as heat really efficiently and keep my gyro trace nice and clean. And uh, let me go that extra mile with the filters and push those PID gains even higher to get the best possible response. The final component of this build is of course the battery. And I'm gonna be using a 6S battery, 1100 milliamp hour, 120 C discharge rate. Uh, this is the FPV, which is, I think it's the house brand of unmanned tech here in the UK. But these are, these are great batteries, I really like them. And they're just about the right weight for this build. They're 200 grams, and that 120C discharge rating 
means that they they really avoid sagging out even on uh, really aggressive high throttle punch outs. So uh, that's the battery I'm going to be using for this build. I hope you enjoy being taken through my perfect AOS 5 build. I'm going to be doing a filter tuning video, a PID tuning video, and also posting flight footage um, of some flights with, with this quad once it's all finished and configured. So if you don't want to miss those, make sure you're subscribed, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.